can't outlast us, bro. You, you can try all you want. Yeah, run back in your fucking face, you fucking pussy. You're fucking horrible. You're getting you're getting off one time, you fucking pussy. I attempted to mentally break my local neighborhood alliance to swipe the thought that they could bully me around because they had the numbers advantage. It led to some entertaining moments, and the best part about it all was that I did it from a base that looked like a cat. I was on AU Rustified Main, and I needed to find a nice build spot for my epic cat base. I headed out to the deep snow to see what I could do. Hello all, we are back on AU Rustified Main, and it appears half the Australian community is also on here because look how many people are going to the deep snow. I've come across a pretty exotic base by a guy called Maverick. I'll link it below. I have modified it for my needs, but it's pretty much a meme cat base that's actually quite strong. We're going to go put it in the deep snow and um, see what happens, so wish me luck. I was a bit optimistic in my base building spot. I wanted to build on that ice lake over there behind the supermarket, but I can already see a base on it, so it's time for plan B. I have another good spot sussed out. Yeah, I'm liking this spot. I actually think it might be better than the ice lake. I've got supermarket satellite dish and the train tunnel entrance next to me. Nice and flat. I'll, uh, and I've also got a trick about the train tunnel entrance. I'll show you later. Nice, we got a good start. I have a base down. I need to be a little bit smarter this time around because the last few wipes I get raided within the first hour. I'm uh, trying not to piss too many people off. I'm going to fortify this thing up a bit before we uh, pop up on anyone's radar to the point they want to raid me. Yay, I've got a friend. <laughs> I've always wanted to be in a duo. Actually, I want more friends. If you like this content, Solos vs. The World, then please subscribe. Nice, they're only stone tools, but I need them, and I'm going to go use them. I want this base to be a bit stronger, because I don't really want to get door raided again like last wipe. So this base I'm building is actually quite unique. It's like a pyramid with a cat head on top of it. It's 88 rockets in an offline raid if you do it properly. But I have customized it to make it good for online raid defense. Um, it's got a nice open core. I'm actually quite keen to build it. I don't really build unique bases that often. Go me. I actually kind of remember the footprint off the top of my head. Nice. It was a smart move to build this base up early because this area descends into complete chaos and I end up with a rather toxic set of neighbours which you'll meet soon. But for now, I had to gather the resources I needed for a workbench, some guns and to just finish off the base. I have a plan. It's a rather toxic plan but it's a plan nonetheless. I'm going to sit in the supermarket with an Eoka behind that jump up. And everyone's coming to this supermarket, it's kind of the lifeline of the area. And I reckon we can pick a few people off to get that early game farm that I need. Nice, why farm when you can farm the farmers? Well, at least I won't get Eoka rated this time.
I'm glad I put those doors on because they would 100% eco raid me if I hadn't. <laughs> he was on to me. Well, I've grubbed about enough to make a P2, so I'm gonna go do that, and hopefully I can snowball a few guns off it, because I think we're gonna need it. Well, I'm not going to say it's karma, but I think I'm now the proud owner of a brand new SAR. Nice, that's actually massive. And I'm very proud of this grub box. I don't really want to use this SAR, but I could hear another one going off at the supermarket and I might just risk doubling up on SARS. Once the clans start raiding through the snow, I'm probably going to need some guns to defend myself. I know this name. He was with that group of guys from the ice lake that killed me early with the guns when I had the bow. I, um, I need to get out quick. They're probably all running over with their guns. My risk had paid off. I now had two SARS. One was going to be used for raid defense and the other I was going to try and snowball with. Now I had a couple threats looming this wipe. One of which was my close neighbor, which you will meet very soon. The other was a massive Chinese Zerg about six squares away. It was only a few hours into wipe and they were already out raiding and their target was the group on the ice lake. I was going to go over and mop up all the scraps. My Ice Lake neighbors are getting raided by the I-26 Zerg, and uh, if I can get in quick, I can get all the scraps, and Zerg's scraps are actually quite valuable to me, and I pretty much need anything I can get at this point. Oh wow, yeah, like, look at it. This is all just like treasure to me. <laughs> Oh my god, look at it all. It's like a little grub's paradise. You gotta remember, it's only been a few hours and I have like two stars and nothing. Like, this helps a lot. Yeah, like if I lose that SAR, this is just gonna help me get back on my feet and it's got salvage tools too, which I need. Right, well, now that I've got this to fall back on, I might go take that SAR out and see if we can kind of snowball off it. No one ever misses these days. What is going on? Like, there's people everywhere. I just got shot at by a bolty. Oh well, back to farming. 
Well, this base here is pretty much gone up in a night cycle. We are going to have to keep an eye on this one. It looks like they're going to try compound too. Um, yeah, this could be a problem. I think these are the guys in that base just down there, like moving in, farming up for it. I can't even just hit nodes in peace. I had some new neighbours in town, I didn't know it yet, but these guys would end up being quite a sizeable alliance and my interactions with them would escalate into some top tier content. But for now, I've been farming my brains out and I was ready to put the next layer of my base on. This layer would help considerably in defending against an online raid, which I thought might be a possibility with how the Chinese have been acting. Alright, to start, we're going to do the externals in the dark, because I don't want to get TC griefed, and um, we'll do the inner ring main. This is actually a really cool base, like props to Maverick, it's uh, one of a kind to be honest. Essentially just think in your head a pyramid. We've done a triangle ring main, we seal it all, and then we just do it again and then we build up with roofs. I know that's hard to envision, but that's kind of pretty much all it is. You end up with something a bit like this. It will be a nice open core once I get garage doors on, but essentially you leave the open core into an outer ring main, which is really good for smoke grenade ceiling. You move up and then you jump out onto the pyramid. Um, yeah, it's I like it. I justify my roof camping because I keep getting grubbed, so I need to just assert some control so people know it's not super safe to be outside my walls. I'm glad I got a lot of that farm out while I could because now these new neighbours have moved in, they kind of just got the side of the snow on lockdown. I pretty much have to farm in the dark, like... I don't know how many of them are yet. I know if there's three for sure. Violet's Callum and someone else, but I'm sure we'll find out soon. Oh, uh, there goes my jackhammer. <laughs> oh, it's violence. Okay, yeah, there's definitely three for sure. This area was becoming difficult to live in. I had a zerg to my south, violence and his crew to my north, and everywhere else was just flooded with players. My only option was to start farming at night, but even then I was still running into people. Now, I hadn't addressed sewer branch much, but it was going to be my lifeline going forward. I was going to sneak in and out at night time and farm it where I could to get the comps for guns so I could at least stand a chance in this area. This bloke's getting raided and uh, I think it's only by like two dudes, I might be able to get something out of it.
back to move all that dog. <laughs> Rust players. I'm uh, I'm gonna take this Tommy and go do sewer branch at night. I think that's the play. I have a lot of stuff I need to recycle that I just haven't been able to do yet. Laptops. Hopefully I get a few from this because I actually need turrets and it's going to be hard to get what I need for turrets out here. So from my little pyramid I can see the activity around this monument during day but I think I can get in and out like on the slide doing this at night and it'll pretty much make or break my wipe I think. Oh my god, look at that juice. 300 scrap. I recycled the laptops. I do. I need scrap over everything else at the moment, but like, that's a lot more than I thought I would get. Oh my god! They are everywhere. There's there's more than three now. Oh, they ain't gonna be happy about this. I'm gonna go over and get some intel because there's more than three now. I don't know who's playing in what base, but I need some answers. Oh, it's Callum again. Okay, this is starting to make sense. There's two groups here. There's like three in the base just in the distance and two in here. Totaling five. I don't know this other guy's friend's name yet. I think it might be Daddy Trot. Um, but yeah, starting to get answers. What the frick did I just walk into? That's violence. They're talking in game as well. Okay. Yep. That allied for sure. <laughs> Take note of this name because it's very important to the story later on. I was becoming more and more acquainted with my new toxic neighbors and their numbers were growing after each interaction. So far I had the names of violence, Jim's MDMA delivery, Callum, Daddy Trot and Fat CNT. Now these guys lived in two bases next to each other and it looked like they were farming up to build a big compound base. They were outside my base all the time door camping me and they were trying to contain me and not let me do anything. They had done enough with the crap talking, door camping and all of that stuff to justify me turning degenerate mode on. I was going to have to fight fire with fire against these guys if I was going to stand a chance to survive at all. 
I'm not going to be pushed around by these guys. Um, I think I can break them. Time to fight fire with fire. You're f weird, bro. Do you leave base without it with, with guns ever or, or just sit on the roof? Tell me. I've never seen you outside with a gun, buddy. I can sense the cracks already. You won't be here for long. You can't outlast us, bro. You, you can try all you want. <laughs> well, I've had a lot of people say that to me over the years and it doesn't end well. They're trying to, like, make me move. There's four of them at my doorstep. <laughs> I am so annoying. Imagine you're getting griefed by a solo and this is the base he's coming out of like. Every time I like inflict pain on them, they're just gonna think of the stupid cat eyes. What? I can't even tell you what happened here. I was eating my lunch at AFK and I heard fire and I've just come out here and one of his bodies here is loaded. Yeah, run back in your fucking face, you fucking pussy. You're fucking horrible. You're getting you're getting fucking offline tonight, you fucking pussy. <laughs> Now, I might have died here, but this death gave me some massive intel on a big flaw that I noticed in their base. They were getting careless, I was going to capitalize on it, and it went way better than I possibly could have ever expected.
Holy... I'm counting respawn time in my head. Oh my god, what just happened? I just cleaned them. Like, there's probably a better way I could have played that. Maybe I could have sealed it or something, but I'm solo. One lapse in judgment, they shut a door. It's over. I just took the best stuff I could see, chucked it in the backpack and ran. Like, don't be greedy in these situations. I came out with that. And if they hated me before, they despise me now. I'm not done inflicting pain yet. I'm gonna go kick them while they're down. <laughs> hey, I need these solar panels. God, I uh, there's a place in hell for me. It was it was that solo kid. Yeah, it was a solo kid up the road. He's so annoying. <laughs> I could not have timed that any better. You speak my name, I appear from the darkness like the boogie monster. Oh God, this is good. I'm enjoying this thoroughly, in a weirdly twisted way. I wouldn't be so cruel if they hadn't threatened to offline me, and I actually do think they're going to do it now, so I really need to spend a bit of time fortifying up this base, or I, um, I'm probably going to wake up to no base. I had dealt a massive blow to these guys, and a bunch of them jumped off for a break. I actually thought I had made them all rage quit, but I assure you that this is not over. They turn to the dark side of gaming, and you'll soon understand what I mean. I did, however, confirm my original suspicion that they were farming for a main base. They stayed away from me for the rest of this day and there was a brief calm in this war. I had a lot of base chores to do. I put some turrets down, fortified the base as I was almost certain they were going to try and offline me. But I did allude to an earlier threat in this video, a massive Chinese Zerg. They were getting closer and closer to my base by just raiding bases in the snow. While there was a small pause in this war, I ran over to go see what they were up to just to make sure I wasn't their next target. I don't really want to have to turn my attention away from these guys. Like, I still think they're a threat, but the Zerg's getting closer and closer, and I need to see how many more bases are left between me and them, because I honestly think it's a race between which one of them two get to me first.
It's nice to know that all these zergs are still blind. They must have got boom from that last raid because they've pretty much just pulled straight up to these guys. They're hitting these guys now. Now, a really bad idea spawned into my head in this moment. I had a lot of scrap and I was afraid I was going to get offline. So instead of letting it go to waste, I did the most logical thing you could possibly do in this situation. I bought an attack heli just to be annoying. For no other reason but to do that. They're pointless as a solo, you can't actually loot anything, and the Chinese were out raiding in force through the snow. While my neighborhood alliance were licking their wounds and gathering up for round two, I just went and annoyed the Chinese because I needed something to do in between. It didn't go very well, but it's funny. Alright, gonna go warm up on the beach and fly around and wait for this Chinese raid. They've done three in the last two hours, so I guarantee you there's another one coming up soon. The key to this game is to never get attached to the pixels. So I don't care if I lose this thing, but we'll see what we can do with it. I'm not even kidding when I say I'm probably gonna get like two minutes of content out of this thing because I have like a thousand low grade. I am full suiciding this into something at the end. Well, that's their base. They aren't home. They haven't shot at me. Is that them? Oh my god, I found them. Jeez, there is a lot of them. So I was close, they're on to me. This is a really, really, really stupid idea. I can't leave this thing, it'll get stolen. I have hardly any rockets and low grade left. And you shouldn't fly these things in the dark, but I'm going out with a bang. Mayday, may I don't know where the ground is. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh that was, I enjoyed that, that was great. Now you might be thinking to yourself that that was a complete waste of scrap. And you're right, it was. But it was better to lose it to an off one and I enjoyed every second of it. Now I did get some intel from this though, that there weren't many bases left between me and the Chinese. It was going to be a race between getting pummeled by a 20 deep zerg or offline by a group of toxic neighbours. Now speaking of my neighbours, they regrouped, picked their way out of the base I sealed and they're up to no good. Well, oh, here we go. I was waiting for this. The old Balti roof camp war. We're into phase three. <laughs> Well, they're trying to expand their main base finally, but not on my watch.
Damn, they got part of it down. I don't think they've placed a TC yet, though. Pulling all the tricks out of the book. I, uh, I've been challenged to outlast them, so I'm going for it. That tool cover will come in handy later. I might actually try and raid them. See, I come across these players all the time in Rust. It's okay when they've got four guys on my doorstep, when they're roof camping me, door camping me, trying to contain me, but the second the shoe's on the other foot and they're getting pushed around, it's the end of the world. They can't handle it. That's another one. That's Sizz. I haven't actually seen that name yet. I haven't seen that name yet either. It's glitching through the wall for some reason, but I don't like, there's way more of these guys than I actually thought. Let's do a quick tally on the names, shall we? We have Violence, Jim's MDMA Delivery, ASX, Callum, Daddy Trot, Fat CNT, and Sizz. There's seven people in this alliance. I did not know it was that deep. There were cracks starting to form, and if they had this many people, I was 100% sure at some point they were gonna try something. I genuinely thought they were going to offline me or maybe try and online me. To make things worse, the Chinese Zerg had just raided my new Ice Lake neighbors, so there was no one between me and the Chinese. It was literally a race and a matter of time to see who was going to get me first. Okay. Fat CNT, what do I know that name from? Oh, he's he's in the Alliance. I've only ever seen him once before at the start of White, but... Like, this could just be a grief tower, but now, like, I know there's a lot of them. They could actually be trying to raid me. <laughs> we'll find out in a minute, won't we? All of them are in Alliance, mate. I'm in Alliance with the attack heli. <laughs> See, I still don't know if this is a rage yet. I haven't heard a rocket, but if I had rockets myself, this would be the perfect time to just hit their raid base with the rockets, but I have no boom. Okay. Okay, yep, they're actually doing it.
That was an experience for sure. You may have been curious about my weird behavior mid-raid and why I would only run out with a hazmat and grenades to try seal. I was 100% certain that Fat CNT had toggled on some sort of aim assist for this raid. Could have been some account they log in when they really need it, but they went from being pretty much bots to complete aim gods. They were even shooting me through smokes in the middle of the raid. The second I would pop my head up, it would be taken off. I've been playing Rust a long time, and experienced players of this game will tell you, when you know, you know. The fact that sold me on this even more is that a player of that ability aim-wise didn't even understand the concept of taking out compound turrets before trying to push into the core. They were inexperienced game sense-wise, but were god-tier aim-wise. That's usually a pretty good indicator that someone's turned to the dark side. I had to play off angles in my inner ring main so as to not expose myself to them, and I would grenade them and throw smokes to get them on bag timer so I could at least seal the base. It worked pretty well, and I'd actually won the raid downside was I had one very big hole in the middle of my base. It was going to take more than seven people, one with aim assist, to take me out of this server. I knew that their morale would have been very low after failing that raid, and I felt I could do one final blow to actually break them and to make them quit. I had a plan, but first I had to fix the big hole in my base. Holy, they must have pumped a lot of rockets. <laughs> just, there's like nothing left in here. I've got all my loot still. There's just not a door left. I should probably go out there and loot their bodies. Hey, I think they're still trying to get in to get them. Like, they didn't even take the turrets out. Like... Wow, there you go, ladies and gents. Get compound turrets. Oh my god. Honestly, like, these guys stoop to a pretty low level this wipe, and I have been no saint myself, but as I said earlier, I fight fire with fire. I'm gonna go try raid them, um, and I'm gonna do it out of peak hour when there's at least none, or as less amount on as possible, so I actually stand a chance of finishing this thing. I put that TC down the other day to grief them. That can easily become a raid base. So, um, I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to farm up for it. See how we go. Where did they come from? I have no idea who these guys are. They've probably just moved here after being raided on the other side of the map. But um, I'm going to farm this boom out and we'll uh, give this raid a go. Alrighty, well, I've been farming most of the day. Um, I actually haven't seen any of them near me at all. They might have rage quit. I'm going to go over there and try and raid them. If they're online, they're online. If they're not, they're not. I don't really care. But um, I'm going to go see what's in that base.
this goes south, I have my car over there full of rockets, so I can bail. Got the raid base up, might as well send it. Yeah, run back in your fucking place, you fucking pussy. You're f weird, bro. Can't outlast us, bro. I don't think they're online, but um, doesn't rule out counters. No idea where this guy has gone. He's just like shot me and run. Maybe he's got like solo sympathy. Look at the little rats. I bet you they've changed their name so they can try and avoid an association ban. My base now. Ooh, 
that's a good box. I like the look of that one. How'd they get so much HQM? Anyway, I'm gonna run this all back to base and we'll do a loot check. Can't be door camped running loot now, and they're never gonna get back in. <laughs> <laughs> it's never easy, is it? Give me back my freaking loot. <laughs> well played, Vort. I would have done the same thing. You did well. Let's have a look what I got from that. Plus what it already had, which wasn't much. I must say, I really, really like the open floor plan of this base design. Um, I might try and turn it into a main base design. Um, I finished my last main base design. I need a new project. How about we turn the cap base into something, not just a cap base, that is viable going forwards. Somehow, against all odds, I made it to the end of this wipe. I never see my neighbours again after that raid. I had successfully broken them. And you might be thinking, where were the Chinese Zerg at the start of the video? Well, they didn't come. They must have seen the raid base and just didn't think that it would be worth it. But I was sitting on a massive pile of kits that I did not want to go to waste. So I went and did what one of my favourite Rust creators Motion likes to do. I went and PvP'd the server. 